Welcome back. On this episode, we're going to be speaking with a top Dutch WTA player, Bibian Suits. We're going to be talking about what she's getting up to in quarantine, umpires, Ryan calls, Wimbledon, a bit of everything tennis. Pleasure to just uh, have you on the podcast and yeah, just finally get to speak to you because you've been like one of these players me and Jaron have been speaking about a lot because we work together and you're just one of these names that keeps coming up in these events that we keep following and like the ITFs and stuff. So yeah, it's just okay. really nice to uh, finally speak to you. Interesting. I'm curious why <laughs> my name will keep it No, up. no, it's brilliant. It's because um, <laughs> me and Ben, like, we love a lot of the like, lower-ranked, like, a- ITF tennis, not always just the main Grand Slam sort of events. And for us, we just see, like, a lot of excitement there. And some of the top, the levels are ridiculously good, man. Like, watching you every week, playing. Um, so, yeah, it's a pleasure. When Ben said that we can get you on, we, like, jumped it. It was like, oh, that'd be brilliant. We've got a lot of questions okay. lined up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, so what have you been up to recently? Obviously, no tennis can be played at the moment. It can be a bit boring. I know you mentioned earlier you've been a bit bored and stuff, but have you been keeping yourself busy yes, as much I as possible? <laughs> yeah, more or less. I mean, um, I always wanted to do for a while to get my motors, motorcycle license. Wow. And okay. it was not possible, of course, because you need a couple of weeks and stuff. But um, So I started that one. So that, that is actually quite fun. <laughs> um, something else than tennis. And tennis, I mean, I've been struggling with a back, in, back injury for a couple of months now, I think since September. So we actually took the first four weeks, four or five weeks to try to get rid of it. Okay. So, yeah, then you're... So I was still on the... Pri- I don't know, you guys, but we were allowed to go out and to go outside and the shops and stuff. So there were you were able to get to courts. A lot of players just looked for a rental court and private, and they went. So, yeah, I wasn't allowed to do that. So I was back to biking, physical training, and strength training. And, yeah, I mean, and riding by two motorbikes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we're not allowed out yet. Like, we've just whistled in quarantine. Like, we've not had any, like, um, anything from the government to say that we're allowed to. We're allowed to do a piece of exercise a day, but lockdown's very much there in the UK at the moment. So... We just resorted to so there's Zoom. nothing, even also for the high players, there's nothing like separate that they can practice at the federation or anything. Not unless they have their own courts, I don't think. Like private courts, I think maybe that's it. But I don't think there's any anything being off unless they're not telling anybody that it's actually happening behind closed doors, which it's possible. But okay, yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, some countries can, some some don't. So yeah, yeah, I think, we are lucky. <laughs> freedom yeah we spoke to one of the guys who is the like trainer or physio for uh taylor fritz and riley opelka and he was saying Mm -hmm. that the only way he could play some tennis was one of his friends had a private court so he was just nipping over to his to knock up but then he said that's only if you've got that luxury but if someone not everyone does that's the thing no that's true i'm sorry um no that's true i mean um not every lucky but plus the side like uh of the countries like you guys apparently are so locked down and we in netherlands are so free i mean people <laughs> go everywhere i see more than ever like you know normally it's like get those people outside because you're stuck on a couch and like you know and now i've never seen so many people outside running cycling doing whatever they can it was it's crazy i mean they have to stay at home that's that's why stay at home as much possible 
<laughs> if it's not enforced though and people tell you to do that it makes people go the other way it's just human nature being told not to do so it's like that red button and don't press it people press it <laughs> that's You're exactly right <laughs> yeah we're supposed to be having like i think that yeah, but you're, like Jaron said, we, you can only go out for a run or you can only go out for one bit of exercise. I've been out oh. for a bit of exercise just to go for a walk. And then there's people having picnics in the park. There's people just walking there like dogs with families, with kids. It's hard to keep people at home. If you've got children and stuff, I bet they're going crazy just in the house for the whole time. So. Yeah, I think it's crazy. I mean, I, and, and also, I mean, if it's raining all the time, it's a different story. But the weather has been beautiful the weeks. Amazing. The best. Even the UK, there's no <laughs> rain here. It's the sun. <laughs> they should have played they should play Wimbledon now. Oh. Yeah, Wimbledon would have been amazing. It That's, really would. Yeah. Like, we're, we're, we're so sad about that. We talk about it every day. Like, please bring yeah, back Wimbledon. It. Like, it's not happening, man. Okay. Anything, anything. Bring back something. But everything is against. I mean, 13 or 17 of July, it's now the first one is planned. But even that one, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm, yeah. Have there, have there oh been God. any other tournaments which have been suggested, like exhibition tournaments or anything like that, been suggested yeah, to you? In the men's, we've seen in America at the moment, there's a few of the guys playing in exhibitions and different things. And also back in Germany, there's um, a few clay court tournaments going on. Yeah. Granted, there are only exhibitions, but it's still good to be playing a bit of tennis, getting just the fitness back. Have you been offered any different events or you hear about anything in the women's side? No, yeah, I got one message from this guy who arranged for normally to play in France or in Switzerland or something. And he said that probably the end of May there was something in Switzerland, but he would get back to me. But I haven't heard from him yet, <laughs> but that doesn't matter. I mean, um, like I said, I took a step down to try to get my back fixed. And that just included doing actually nothing except walking and strength training three times a week. But um, so I'm still trying to build up. Like I think most of the people, you cannot start from being six weeks like this and then suddenly go back and playing two and a half hour matches. Uh, so yeah, I'm all, or also curious. I mean, you see those guys playing. I'm like, did you keep on practice? Like, were you able apparently to practice during all those weeks? Because not a lot are. No. But um, no, in Holland they're trying. They're trying to start something up, but the federation was saying that. They want to give some people to get back on level, you know, to practice a little bit before they start tournaments with the possibility of injuries. Yeah, well, I guess in a way, like the best way possible, that this break did come in not the worst time for you in terms of like you was carrying an injury anyway. It's given you extra time for recovery. Um, yep. How how is it going with the with the whole like uh, recovery and stuff? Is your back feeling a bit better now? Yeah, thank God it's better, but still, I mean. Uh, before you were playing still a lot and even though you had some pain it's you know you're uh, it's my mother i'm sorry you're <laughs> 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 walking this Hi, uh. <laughs> 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 yeah, <the> <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you ah oh, nice barbecue yeah. perfect yeah there's so, so many um, of them yeah yeah the good weather come on what i know else do you do outside exactly I mean, yeah we have our windows and doors open every day here and literally that's all i can smell like every single day there's a barbecue going on around oh, no, there. It's <laughs> uh, no yeah so the federation is trying to um to give people thing and also with my back now that's a good one i mean it's going well but still i'm building up to like i practiced yesterday one hour tennis <laughs> oh nice that's really good yeah I uh, still, I mean, I can't complain looking at you guys saying that you have to, like, <laughs> hardly anything is happening. I mean, I'm I'm the lucky one, I guess. Oh, yeah, no, not much. But we're having an announcement for Sunday, tomorrow, basically. So we'll see what happens. But it's not going to be much. Like, if anything, it's going to be no? a few little things opening. But we're still locked down here in the UK. UK have got the highest um, death rate in Europe. So Well, even worse than Italy and Spain. Yeah, yeah, worse than Italy and Spain now. Yeah, we overtook we're, them. So. We're being heavily criticised for the, our lax stance on the uh, yeah on the crisis. So apparently now this is well, you've seen the death tolls gone past these countries like Italy and Spain. So we're an example I now. See that. Yeah, they're making apparently an example. Holland's not sure. Apparently Holland <laughs> is not showing it. <laughs> they're not. Uh, okay, no, I mean, gosh, but they had a. Let me see, 28th of April, they said, okay, we're going to announce something different because we're locked down, basically, except for, I mean, lockdown. You have lockdown. They call it intelligent lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> lockdown. 
like to keep distance and whatever but um supermarkets were still open and things where you can buy to do build build stuff you know in the house but suddenly they expanded till the 20th of may and suddenly on wednesday last wednesday they were like okay uh no last week was children were allowed to play sports because yeah so much criticism about the children and they get you know not lazy but they're not moving so they said two weeks ago free about children to move and wednesday we heard now from monday on we adults can also start uh playing sports outdoors within one and a half two meters distance of course and um what else i think they're gonna open suddenly a lot of things you know like hairdressers like dentists oh, wow. like physios suddenly like before it was like this and now suddenly they opened up to everyone i'm like okay that's so weird yeah. now this is very interesting i didn't know anything about this so for me i thought like we just moved tennis to a to a new uh, netherlands then we'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> you better because the federation was actually at the federation was the only place where i was allowed to to be able to play tennis so only certain people was allowed to come if you did uh, if you meet a certain criteria. So they had to like li- put in this protocol where to walk, like one uh, direction only street. So you had to walk around and the, the how to use the toilet with the um, measurements. And now not even one half week later, we're all free to go. Wow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> crazy. I mean, free. Yeah. I'm, I'm still gonna, there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you on, uh, well, because of all of this craziness that we're experiencing at the moment with, uh, we don't know how it's going to be when you finally get to go back and play tennis. And I know that, well, singles is one thing, which I know that you're obviously, but with doubles, you're obviously, you're having some great form with your doubles at the moment. And you've been like really doing well in that. How's it going to work playing doubles like from from now on? Like That's interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Do you have to yeah, be masked no up? I mean. Do you have to be where? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's impossible, but it's just, I don't know. I think um, now also it's different. People are, you know, we all are aware of this thing, but before it came, ah, it's in China. It will, you know, it will stay there. No, it doesn't. And it comes back and then you have the car- carnival. How You have that as well. How you call that? Where people go out actually celebrating drinking and <laughs> okay, oh, yeah. Never mind. yeah yeah carnival oh. like, festival type yeah thing, festivals so. yeah yeah and and the worst i mean in holland that's why we had actually the biggest problem because uh in the area because only in the south it's where they celebrate that big and there okay, we okay. had the biggest explosion of sick deaths and whatever and in the north wow. where no one did it it's not that bad so yeah i guess uh to play doubles i mean you're both healthy and you know if you don't kiss each other and take each other's <laughs> bottles i think it shouldn't be that big you know problem i mean you know it's going to be so weird though when it does go back and we're able to play tennis again and things resume people are going to be scared to get close to anyone like even shaking hands and stuff it's always yeah, you're going to see I a new a new norm <laughs> everything's going to be just a little elbow no or... i i saw it at, uh, i saw it this morning i watched the highlights of uh tommy paul versus uh hubert Herkaz. And to shake hands, they touch rackets at the end instead, like from a distance. Oh, yes, I found that too. Yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. a different way yeah. of doing things. This is going to be very weird. It takes We're a see, few... Well, there's also talking about like bringing like less human involvement in tennis. So there's going to be more like robotics and different things with like no, not so many like line judges. And it's going to change. And I don't know if it's a good idea because I know it's with football, they've done it more with VAR and stuff. And I feel like that's yeah, but, definitely ruined the game for the worst. Like, I don't want tennis to get involved in stuff like that. I love no, tennis the way it they, is. They cannot, I mean, even already at the ITF events, we hardly have umpires, line umpires. We're, we're yeah. lucky if there are two on the line, you know, looking through the net who doesn't see anything on the other side of the net. So uh, does this... in England are the worst. I've got a question about that, actually. <laughs> I've got a question. <laughs> Why do you talk about that? Something I've always wanted to ask, actually. <laughs> How often on the ITF, like generally on a match, obviously it depends depending on each match, but how often is the umpire incorrect with line calls? Does it happen quite a bit? The line calls? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they are. No, often they are, but it's also how experienced they are because sometimes it's funny. In France, I played last in Macon, a tournament, and literally a girl of like 12 or 13 years old, I think 13, I asked her, she was standing on the line. Okay, yeah, no experience whatsoever. Then you cannot expect her to make those 
really you know cause but the older ones who have experience they're not that bad at all and, but everyone makes mistakes you know it's i mean and at the WTA, you have the lucky that they're on both sides, but on the ITF, they're like on one side and they do the whole line. Yeah, okay, it's not, they make mistakes and you just will know it. But come on, even the idiots who are sitting on the baseline often miss the ball. So yeah, it's got to be, <laughs> I mean, it's got to be, it's got to be frustrating though when you know that you could be potentially lose like, oh, I don't know, get a break point against you or have certain big points go against you. And financially, it's huge as well, like for qualifications to tournaments and different things. Like it's a big, if the ball's this side of the line by a little bit, it can change a lot in tennis. So it's something that they yeah. do need to get more right, lower down. We notice it more when we watch ITFs so that we find that the frequency of calls, does it, it seems to be a lot wrong. Like we can't always see because watching a stream, but you can kind of tell by the player's reaction when something's out. Do you know what I mean? Like with the, yeah, the, well, the, the way really it goes. Off. Yeah, and I have to say England is known among players who is one of the worst umpires. I'm sorry. There are a few good ones, of course. You have okay. them. But the, the, um, the average, the age of England's, um, sorry, UK's umpires is, I think, 50 plus, 60 plus. Okay, yeah. You know, yeah, that's, that's also, then, then you have experience and you have just not seen well. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, you can't <laughs> <hear> <laughs> <enough fast enough. laughs> Yeah, no, I don't doubt I mean, that at all. Yeah. I don't doubt that at all, for sure. It's a good point. Anyway, in Holland, we have the same problem. I mean, we have people, how someone, uh, because apparently, because my coach used to be an umpire on the chair, and he used yeah. to do actually also line umpire, but he did at Wimbledon, but also at ATP finals. So I learned a lot from him as well, how it works. And it's a completely different world. It's actually quite, as you know, it interesting. And I start to respect it actually more since I know I mean, there's mm. actually a ranking also in line empires in the ATP finals. You have oh. a top 10 and the top yeah. 10 of the world, of, they get there and you're selected. So, yeah. you know, then, but there you have the top of the um, people. But in Holland, it's also, it's a joke. I mean, they're average older because no one wants to be in a chair anymore because you just get yelled at. Well, yeah, I think that's a problem. <laughs> I think that's probably why they have to select them very carefully, perhaps as well on the ATP tour, because there's a lot of hot-headed guys in that uh, that they have to deal with, and they can probably well, yeah. you've seen that they can come into some very heated discussions with some of those players. No names, uh, <laughs> names, but we all know who they are. <laughs> yeah, and apparently, men is really absolutely much worse than women. Women often don't speak up that much. So um, it is true. But I have to say, in the beginning, it was like, oh, it's all umpires and everything. But now I have been playing on for two years also on the WTA and having like better umpires because there are different levels. They have different, no, whatever. There's a big difference. Yeah. You actually, when you get them on the chair, you actually feel it. And then, but it's funny, like you were saying, you get frustrated. Sometimes, don't want to mention name, but there's uh, this... Polish umpire, very nice, but I've had her a few times on the chair, and it's like the other day I went to the court, I'm like, oh shit. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, then it's just so I know, and then you already are in doubt before you bloody even start the match yeah and that's not yeah. good you don't want that so, doubt in your head at all like you need to be completely no. dedicated and committed to what you're doing on the court and have your game plan yeah fully um, focused isn't it but yeah, something yeah, you touched but at one point you get yeah no sorry go and say what you said no no like you said you gone okay you see it you think of it okay whatever i go play but at the moment it gets critical and you are in doubt then you don't have confidence well i know these other guys i had and they're the gold badge they have been on semi i have had this in the qualifying of us open i walked to the court i'm looking at the guy i'm like oh shit it was the first round <laughs> qualifying match us open against this norwegian girl and we had carlos and ramos on the chair he did the year before the finals at, between uh, serena and osaka uh, oh, so wow, yes wow. serena and osaka and i was like hey how are you doing because i know him from younger and he was like hey, i haven't seen you all blah blah i'm like geez the last match you did here was the finals <laughs> last year and now you're sitting on my chair <laughs> 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 You know, how does he feel? But that moment, I'm like, okay, you know, you know the guy is good, you know? Then it's different already. It's also different. Maybe <laughs> you're too Serena. humble, though. You're too humble. You're a big deal as well. He must, he must be thinking, wow, it's yeah. soups. Maybe Serena <laughs> put in a... Com 
maybe Serena put in a complaint against them. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Sure, I think, you know, you can put, um, you can go to the tournament to put uh, someone on the blacklist. No. Both ways. Oh, really? We wow. can say as player, like, okay, we don't want that person. Oh, but wow. they can also put a player, okay, we do, I don't want that player for a year. We were speaking oh, to Dennis Kudler uh, yesterday, and uh, hey? he was uh, telling us that uh, there's a big fine if you swear on court as well. He was saying they, they were going to fine him $2,000 for swearing at Wimbledon when he was just said he just wanted an effing beer. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Wimbledon apparently is much worse, of course, than the than the regular, than other tournaments. It's this big difference. And even there, the ITF is different than the ATP and the WTA. And depends which umpire you have, because I had this other umpire and he's such the, you know, how you call someone who's so particular on every rule. And if you, the moment you little out, he just gets you. Yeah. There's in Dutch, there's a certain name for it. But it's anyway. Meticulous, so, maybe. I don't know. Or very yeah, particular. I don't know. But too much, you know, like yeah. that you're an ass so much. <laughs> I've, got word, I've got a word, but I'm not sure if you can say on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's up to you. So, um, so, yeah, it also depends who you have on, on the chair, who, who will find you much and who not, or who understands you a little bit more, you know? So it's also really... De- so even their rules, it still depends on who executes it on the chair. Okay, so, so yeah, I, I, I've have, got an interesting yeah. question then from this. So um, recently we've seen like a lot of news talking about a potential like a WTA ATP merger. For a start, and I'm question number one, do you, are you in favour of that? Do you think it's a good idea? And if it was to happen, we, I, I feel like we'd see a different, like tennis would change, right? It would evolve for the women's side and the men's side. We'll see a new tennis. Yeah, I think the, um, I think it benefits the women more than the men. To be honest, I think the men have a real nice structure broadly for the uh, more players. And now, of, of course, the discussion is as well for helping the lower ranked players. And I think in general, the men, uh, they earn more than, the, I'm sure, they earn more than women because they have often hospitality. I don't know if you know, but um, on the challengers, yeah, they have hospitality, which includes hotel and food. And our women's, okay, in, on the WTA you do, but on the challengers, nine out of 10 is just not with, a, with hospitality. It is a big difference in money, even beside price money, just the fact of not paying your hotel for a week if you're yeah, doing well. Uh... It's huge. Food? Yeah. So I think the men, I don't know if it will, they said maybe in the end, yes, but. Yeah, it's so confusing. It's so different. And I think for you guys, if you are looking at both, like, okay, what's going on here and what's going on there? It's different. The names, the points, the ranking. Mm. It's, yeah, so I think for general tennis, it's a good thing. I don't know how much the men will really do it. But I think for the women, if they make it, because the, AT, the WTA is more focused on the top 150, like yeah. concerning, because it, then you are a full member. So there, they really want to take care of their members. And if you're lower, you're, okay. You know, it's different. I mean, you know what I mean. It's not yeah. bad, but it's just to take care of the, that. And no. the rest is ITF, because if you're top 150, 200, you do WTA. And the rest, actually, on women should play ITF, while the ATP, most of it is ATP, except challengers ATP. Yeah, because it's interesting, because there's not like really a challengers in the women's tour, is there? It doesn't exist. Do you no, not think there yeah, should be something say, like that, like a level, like a challenger sort of level where you've got I ITF so. challenger and ATP? Uh, they call, if we play 25 and how, higher, in the women we say we play challenger. And for okay. us, 50,000, 15 are called as futures. But okay. we don't have it like the guys really named. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, the yeah, like guys, the 25 and the 15s are the ITF. And everything higher is ATP challengers. But we have still 100,000, 50,000. We have actually all ITF. So mm. it's different. Yeah. But certainly a problem which I feel across the board, this is ATP, WTA, uh, everywhere, is definitely the prize money. And it's like um, it def- a lot of people are talking now because it's a bit we're in a crisis and about money. But I feel like it's an issue we need to be talking about throughout the year, like all the time. The way the money is sort of focused at the top is not right at the moment. And it needs to be sort of filtered down to lower ranked players 
because we want to see them players coming through. Like we love watching the lower ranked players. It's more fun for us, if anything. Yeah, and we just want to yeah, see then. like them get be able to give on a pedestal to be able to be the likes of the next Serena Williams or yeah, one of the top yeah or even just rich. make money. And yeah. I wrote this on Twitter the other time that an uh, an supervisor a few years ago he said that a even more years ago there was an idea to take one or two percent of the total prize money of grand slam atp and wga put it into the itf so that the lowest prize money of the itf would be sixty thousand. oh yeah so brilliant anymore Great 15 idea. Days, but 60 so that means you're not talking a different point but just about the money so that yeah the lowest price money is 60 but of course it has to be voted on and yeah yeah, well, I, didn't I thought, came true as you noticed. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's a really great idea, to be honest, because I think that that's just one less. I mean, I can't speak for tennis players, but I, after we spoke to Noah Rubin, and he's very for people's mental health, and he, that would be one less thing that players would have to worry about if they didn't have the worry of money, and they know that if they get so. Less. Yeah, exactly. One less thing to worry yeah. about going into tournament. The one, it's like a little pressure off your shoulders, knowing yeah, I don't have to win this to get my ticket, plane ticket home or something. That's yeah, it's we'll nothing better be than watching a, a tennis though, player on court with less yeah. stress. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like I don't think yeah, any no. tennis professional should have that sort of worry because you're that good at the yeah. sport. Like I don't. Yeah. It's and if you look at other oh. sports in comparison, like football, obviously it's different. They've got more like broadcasting money and marketing and stuff, yeah. but. It, there's a lot of other sports what pay very highly and I feel like tennis players they should be getting more than what they do that's just maybe I'm biased because I love tennis but just from no, the general I think the thing same. enough a lot of uh, those graphics about showing the difference between NBA and football which where is the money I mean here it's just if you're top 100 basically you are there and if you're top 200 you already earn like one fourth less than a top 100 but yeah. if you're a thousand or something, but I, okay, I have to say between Seb, there's earning money between the players, but uh, of course you have people going up, you know, like starting and moving through the ranks. But yeah, to be honest, there are also people who are like 700 and lower who has been there for like 10 years and just keep playing and who maybe don't have the level. That's, that doesn't matter. But yeah, that, you know, there has to be a little bit difference, but the top at least... Yeah, six, five, six hundred should be at least five hundred should be able to do something, you know, like yeah. make and um, make more of a living or whatever. But the same with the the WTA, ATP as well. They both have a pension fund, for example. But this is linked also amount how many years you are on the certain ranking and how much you earn. But actually, if you so if you earn more you get a higher pension in the end but the thing is if you earn already so much you're top 10 or top 20 or whatever you yeah. have such a big income you actually basically don't need that pension or hardly anymore so i was talking to so uh, to this other girl that like yeah you know they should like put it average make it down so that more people can actually profit yeah. from yeah. from a pension later on because yeah, for in, sure. yeah we don't have it i mean me, I still am not entitled to it. A lot of girls don't enti are entitled to it, and you have to be five years not wow. consecutive, but well, but still five years in total of your career, top hundred fifty in singles. Wow, which is difficult to achieve if you trying to avoid injuries, that they're trying to stay within that bracket is very difficult. Yeah, it's not. So it's a small bracket and yeah. a lot of money. Well, if you put like say, if you say three years in. 200 it's already you know like even five years in 200 it's a uh, something you yeah know? it definitely For seems sure. like a broken system to me but yeah it's yeah. it's skew I, it's off yeah, i think i think we would find less like i know that it's a very controversial subject as well but if there was more money in the lower rank like in the lower tournaments I think you would have less about this match fixing and all of these stuff because the players wouldn't yeah, be yeah, doing this type of thing yeah. for money on the side. Like, I yeah. know it's a terrible thing to bring up, but it does happen. And there's a lot of players yeah. on tour that are very, very angry about it. And with that, yeah, no, it, would, it, it would prevent it. It would surely prevent a lot of that happening if players were getting paid better. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I think it would. But even just to see the different 
attitude among the, the future tournaments, how everyone's actually killing each other for one point. And the moment you go up, of course, still people are killing it, like working for it, but it's, it's different. But like there is like out of, you know, it's such a different world, but it's just, yeah, it's not fair how it's, I think, distributed at the moment. Let's move on to something a little bit more lighthearted. If yeah, I was going to say that a lot. And I... Yeah. Uh, you're, the, you're inside the top five uh, players uh, in the Netherlands as well for women. So that's like an amazing achievement for yourself. Like, uh, are you able to give us like some background on maybe like how you got started in tennis and stuff over there in the Netherlands? Is there quite a good system to help you get into tennis over there? Um, I think in the beginning when I was younger than, I mean, I started with my dad. My dad is a tennis teacher. So there was easily jump made, getting to the tennis courts and stuff. And then uh, in the early system, there was, of course, the federation would help you a lot. And there were like from lower groups, lower levels who helped you. Um, yeah, you could move through. But nowadays, I think it a little bit changed. Like it starts at the tennis, regular tennis club. And then you go to the more, yeah, you know, maybe to the academies. And if, if you're really up here, you can go to the federation but at the younger days there was a lot of federation and a lot of big groups and traveling together and yeah i think it was really nice uh, at that, at that you know, period what's your favorite tournament to play on the, on the whole of the tour like was there any particular place you just think ah oh, i love this tournament coming up and i love traveling to that destination and is there is there one particular one on the uh, on the tour Wimbledon, definitely yeah. Wimbledon. <laughs> Uh, actually, Wimbledon, the, I think main draw was great, but we, I played doubles main draw, but the qualies, to play qualies Wimbledon, it's... So it's UK umpires again, isn't it? As well. But also, <laughs> no, but you know, you know we don't play qualies at the main side of Wimbledon, right? Yeah, I'm, I think I've seen some of the qualifications. We play at Roehampton. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. There it's like cricket court, cricket grass, and they just paint lines on it. And we play tennis on it for a couple of weeks. Oh, yes. So interesting. the feeling of Wimbledon qualies, if you play qualifying, you don't really have the feeling you play Wimbledon. Yeah, because everyone is in white, but that doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? not, so so where, where would it be then for you? What is your favorite place to go and play? I mean, I love Wimbledon, but it would be, you know, nice to experience experience more the Wimbledon feeling and you have to be on at Wimbledon self to really do that so at the ITF I always like Germany well organized very small actually always, always plays well the 60,000 um, but my WGA favorite is um, Auckland because now it, yeah a few things well, you might say I won my first w <laughs> yeah. yeah I won my first WGA there with Sarah and then I also had a great go uh, against Genie in on center court, which was an evening match center court, and that was actually uh, so the two greatest, um, yeah, like the greatest moments we were there. So that's my like special tournament. <laughs> it's such wow. an amazing country as well. So you might really lucky to be yeah. going to these places, experiencing like uh, well, New Zealand, what a, what a place! I've never had the chance to go myself. But I bet it's everything. Thing. If you don't see anything, you no. don't see anything <laughs> <You> don't. <laughs> <At> the club. <laughs> <laughs> so, so wait, who did you play in the final? Did you say Jeannie? Was it Jeannie Bouchard? No, I won doubles there with oh. Sarah. Yeah. Uh, and 2019, I won first round against. I'm not sure who I beat. Uh, oh yeah, I played against Allison, but she retired at five two. And then I played second round at Jeannie Bouchard. So okay. 2000. That was it. Yeah. Yeah, I, watch, I was watching some of that. That was in January, Thank but that, oh, there was one I was watching of yours against Bouchard, which was January 2019, I think. And uh, yeah. yeah, that looked like a bit of a dogged affair, like uh, both of you <laughs> properly going at it. Like, what was it like playing her? I know she's like obviously quite a highly ranked uh, tennis player. What she was top five at one point. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I think top ten. I'm not sure which yeah. exactly, but. Uh, no, but I heard afterwards from her coach because she stopped with her coach, and I saw him a couple of time, uh, a year later when he was coaching uh, Timea Babos. Yes, and he was telling me he was actually disappointed she had to play me because I was a nobody. So 
Uh, she was like a little bit apparently cocky, like, oh, I have to play her. And he told her, you'd better watch out because I, I've seen her now and it's going to be difficult. But You won the first yeah, set I mean, as well. I mean, yeah, after set point down and challenging it and have be right, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine not having a challenge there? So actually the serves guy missed it and the umpire missed it. The ball was like this far out. There was a set point. So if I didn't challenge it, I would have lost the set. Oh, wow, yeah. Oh, you don't need fine that. margins. <laughs> yeah. Been... Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was that was one that looked like really interesting to watch. I was watching another one where you're playing Elise Mertens as well. I think this is in Luxembourg last year. I know. That, I know that the first set wasn't uh, the particularly uh, great, but uh, the second set. There's a story behind it. But okay, but the second set. I was going to say, you yeah. did you want to tell the story? Yeah, the story. Yeah, 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 yeah the story. Go, go for the story first. So I was just gonna... until one hour before I didn't know I had to go on court. Oh no! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> How did that happen? Yes, because you have the system of lucky loser. You guys know, ah, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but I, you have to sign in the morning to be able to, yeah, beat. And I was actually the first one there. So she said, "Yeah, you're number one lucky loser. So if someone pulls out, you're in." I'm like, "Okay, good. So I'm gonna stay here. I warm up. I warmed up." But then she came to me like, oh, sorry, you made a mistake. You're not first, you're second. No, okay. But then because there was only talk about one girl who was going to retire and it was against Elisa. And she also was there to play. So I was like, okay, you know, then I'm done. I'll leave. So actually I went with my doubles play partner. We went to the city. (laughs) First First we warmed up, then we went to the city. (laughs) <laughs> and then at one point they called us at five o'clock. Says, "Where are you?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm just coming back to the club, but I'm not there." Yeah, yeah, at six you're on. I'm like, "What do you mean?" Yeah, you're playing. I'm like, "What happened to the other girl?" Yeah, she doesn't want to play. I'm like, "What?" Um, <laughs> she doesn't okay. want to play. I'm like, and in the end they made a mistake. So I was first all day long, but they just made a mistake, and I didn't want to admit it at the time. But that's okay. So we start driving back, big traffic jam. So I end up uh, running the last 2K back to the court because what? if not, I wouldn't uh, have been on time. Two, <laughs> two K, <laughs> two K run. That's brilliant. Man. I, That's I, so good. I was going to say you went out in the town having like a big slap up lunch or something, just ready and then have to go and run on court after eating or something. <laughs> there were, I hardly had, I hardly had eight and something really, but uh, a, a, a two k run before you go up against at least Mertens isn't the uh, best uh, thing. I wouldn't have thought. But yeah, yeah, I didn't have much outfit with me or whatever. So actually, yeah, so I went on court. I was like, Shit, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? So wait, how did the match go, Ben, in the end? Ah, uh, well, that, that's why I didn't want to sound too down. Now, now we completely explain the first set. So there's like excuse. The first set was six love to Elise Mertens, but the second set, I was going to say, you completely changed up like the strategy, which I thought was really like great to see. You sort of worked out that you would just ping a l- yeah. load of drop shots were just falling in, and then as soon as your, your lob was just amazing, every time she you drop shot her. You literally hit the baseline with every lob, this backhand side. I was like, it was like clockwork. Like you've hit that one in training multiple times, oh. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that bad. No, but it's just uh, also, I mean, sometimes I have to say myself, if you, if I look at him and I look at them, I'm like, okay, it's high level, but how is high level? And I have to say when I got on court, I mean, I was relaxed and everything, but when I got on court and I, I was surprised, Surprised by the level. I mean, how often do you play against someone who's top twenty? Mm. And if they are at shape, apparently. So I was at that moment. I experienced how it is to play someone top twenty who's actually playing well. At least so a very big hitter as well. Actually, like she can hit through the ball quite hard. Like she's a very good hitter. Yeah, the ball. yeah. She changed, and normally I play like a ball. I'm like normally that's a good ball, and now I got like an even better ball. I got back. I'm like, oh, okay. But <laughs> so I had to get used to her game as well her level yeah. because i have never played actually a top 20 for a year so it's it's a different level which also you have to get you so that was also part of six love because like okay this is different okay i have to do something to get in there it was the 2k run let's put it down to the 2k run it was the <laughs> <laughs> and the part of no eating and walking in the center for half a day <laughs> yeah, yeah part of that as well <laughs> yeah you'd already relaxed you'd be yeah. Your your mind had relaxed already from the uh, 
from the first set. So when you got your when you got your mind back in the game, see, that's when it all started coming together in the second set, and you started picking her off with those lobs. Start being better. <laughs> yes, it was think, better, much better. As an as an overall comment though, the WTA is like very exciting in terms of like there's so many good players who can win tournaments. That's what I find the best thing. Like when you watch a tournament, like from start to finish, there's so many names at the beginning, and it's like very unexpected. You don't know who's going to win, really. It's all about no, who's. No, yeah. Yeah. Like with the men's, it's more predictable than what the women's is in terms of like there's so yeah. many good players in the women's. It's very much uh, sometimes 50-50. Yeah. It's hard to know, uh, which yeah, I think gives awesome. a lot of opportunity yeah. for players like you. Like you've got a really good chance to win tournaments and all, all across the board, really. So it definitely is an exciting element. But from that, do you have yeah. a one player you like watching, like one of your favourite players? Barty. Hey. Barty. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant, yeah. That's what I mean. What What do you think of? I know that I was following a few like the Dubai Open. I think it was where there was Ons Jabur who's sort of just storming on the scene a little bit recent recently, and she's just been playing some yeah, incredible. She's, fun. she's also really fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. she's been, she, she looks fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but some of the shots she's, she's fun. <laughs> she's able. She's such a big hitter though. I was like, I was really shocked. Her level suddenly went like up all of a sudden over the past I think she like, rose to play in better players she started playing better players and just managed to rise to that level and she was able to bring her game up as well and that's just something what yeah. players need to be able to do yeah to play better players and to go up that's how it also basically kind of works if you have the level yeah so why Barty apart from the obvious that she's like brilliant at tennis no but I like her I don't like I mean the Serena just hitting, I'm sorry, so uh, Osaka also just hitting, you know, there's no mixing up, Kvitova also, it's all, sorry, it's one-dimensional hitting and okay, tactics, but a Barty is a slice, a drop shot, she comes in, you know, it's it's not all foot ready, foot ready, okay. <laughs> that's fine, we'll cut it, we'll cut it we'll, soon anyway. That's all right. Um, so yeah, different kind of time type of game, it's not the just the same thing she's not big and I like that the all round player who does different things even Taylor Townsend I think is great to watch the fertility the change and the serves fully aggressive to the net I, I mean I love it nice perfect well I guess we'll probably wrap it up there we'll let yeah. you have your dinner I don't want to get in cold for you <laughs> that's alright no worries <laughs> that's <Sorry>. fine obviously <laughs> but, yeah, thank you a... so much for coming on it's been a pleasure just talking to you and asking these questions we've had in our head for a while it yeah. looks like you're in good spirits to keep them going and we can't wait to see you back on yes. court soon. Yeah, I would love to as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. enjoyed it. Thank you very much, guys. Thank no you. No worries. You take care. So, have a good night in yeah, the quarantine too. as well, lockdown. <laughs> Cheers, we will do our best. Thank right, you. Bye-bye. Cheers, bye-bye. <laughs>